What's up guys and today we have a power rankings from the first match day of Euro 2024. It's going to be pretty quick, pretty rapid fire and let's get straight into it. So pretty much we have outstanding, promising, mid, a worry and horrific tiers and we start off with Germany. They had a massive 5-1 victory over Scotland and it has to be outstanding. Amazing all around from defence to midfield to attack. Even Fulkrug, he scored two goals right? Tony Cruz, Musiala, Florian Wirtz, what a dynamic trio of sorts and a lot more to see from the hosts. Moving on, we got Denmark. You have to say, bottom of mid. Disappointing. Versing Slovenia, who, although is full of momentum and inspiration, they are in their first Euros, I believe, in quite a while. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. That being said, a lot more expectations on Denmark. And you know what? I'll put them down to a worry because this is not about how good they are historically. It's about how they play the match they won. For example, if France were to have lost 5-0, maybe not 5-0, but even 2-0, they'd go straight into horrific or a worry or horrific. It's about how you played, not your history of quality. Serbia, they lost and it was to England and they played okay. Possession football, they actually had a lot of possession against England. I would put them at the bottom of mid. They need a bit more of just pull the trigger, take some shots. Not a lot of long shots in that match against England. The biggest chances were actually with Vlahovic and Mitrovic taking those shots and you have to test the goalkeeper. That being said, Filip Kostic is now gone for the likelihood of the tournament unless they go very far, but that's unlikely. So for now, mid. England, they beat Serbia, but I wouldn't put them too far ahead of Serbia in terms of quality of how they played in match day one. Jude Bellingham bailed them out with a goal. It was quite, as someone said, terrorist football, Serbia versus England. It wasn't a very good match to watch. Is it coming home? I don't know. But I do know that Germany was outstanding compared to England. But a lot of quality there. But something was missing. I'm not sure if it was the midfield or the attack. Foden was almost on an island at left wing. Something's going to have to change. Particularly if they have a similar result. Or not a result because a win's a win. But if they have a similar performance against Denmark, something has to give. Poland. I was quite impressed with their performance given that they were missing Lewandowski. They were outclassed to some extent. Denmark were just coming at them, coming at them. And they were resisting. I would put them in a similar category to Serbia perhaps below Serbia. They're just not that great. And I know it's only based on the one match, so I might be contradicting myself a bit. I think that was as good a chance for Poland to actually get a win this whole tournament, and that includes their match against Austria. The Dutch, that we move straight into the, their opponent, and I'm going to say a bit higher quality than England because they were actually going forward, creating a lot of chances, and unlike the English, they kept on coming. Okay, they did concede a goal off a set piece, but they were fluid in attack and got that decisive goal in the end. And and Ronald Koeman was the real outstanding uh, manager for the round, giving that awkward meme. Just a note to Ronald, just keep your hands away from your mouth and your nose. Austria, it was decent. They were like tipped as a dark horse for a lot of the tournament. A lot of these teams are going into the mid category, but another team has to go into mid. I think mid is par. It's a par. We can rename it par. That being said, solid performance. They didn't have all too many chances. They had that chance in the first half. Was it a header or something like that? That being said, they could have considered more than one goal and Mbappe was in on goal. It was a solid match, but I think France, who are coming up now, were in control for most of it. And is it in order of the teams who played? I believe so. So that's actually pretty good in terms of talking. France, I would put them in between, actually ahead of England and the Dutch, because I feel as if their defense was much surer than England and the Dutch and their attack, they actually created a few chances. And it could have easily been 2 or 3 nil. Kante played well as well in his return to the national team. And I'm actually quite confident with the French in relation to how they played as compared to the English and the Netherlands. We'll briefly interrupt that video because our growing partnership with Socorato's is growing and going into the Euros, which only starts in what, 48 hours from now, you have to get your jerseys. You can't be missing out now. You have to be wearing your nations or the nation you like if your nation didn't qualify at the Euros. If you're not going to the Euros, you can wear it any way you want. You don't want to be the person that doesn't have their favorite or your nation's colors. Please make sure to get it. As you can see here, we have pretty much every nation covered at Socorato's. Portugal, France, Italy, Serbia, Belgium, Croatia, you name it. There's retro jerseys, there's modern current jerseys, whatever you want. And of course, as always, use code SPORT at checkout. For example, when you buy this Croatian kit, you can get it customized with a patch, uh, name and number. Number. Let's make it large. For such quality jerseys, it actually arrives pretty quickly as well. Customization might take a bit of a longer period of time for it to arrive. However, it's quite fast and as you expect. So pop in sport 
as your discount code it should register there you go 10 percent off and frequently there's free shipping involved for soccer Atos, which is a great initiative of theirs so make sure to check out soccer Atos for your euro 2024 kits they're fast delivered reliable they're quality so thank you for soccer Atos for sponsoring this video belgium disappointing disappointing i'll put them as a worry because can't be losing to Slark here on match day one. Of course, you do have very winnable games coming up against Romania and Ukraine. It's disappointing to lose. Of course, somewhat questionable calls in the VAR ruled out two goals, but you can't be losing to Slovakia on the opening day of the tournament for Belgium. And it's a worry. It's a big worry. Now they're going to have to back it up with a win against, I think they're versing Romania next. I'm not sure. A worry. Slovakia, great, a great result for Slovakia. Let's put them actually, given their respect they deserve, at the top of mid. I might have to redo this a little bit. I'll put actually France in promising. Put Slovakia, that's better. It looks a bit better for now. Slovakia played well. Very solid defense led by Milan Screener. And well done to Slovakia. Big upset, the biggest upset ranking wise in European Championship history. 48 versus rank three. Well done to the Slovaks. Romania promising actually outstanding well done to Romania what a win against Ukraine they just really took their chances it was a mistake by Lunin that first goal and even the second goal to some extent amazing finish by Stansu well done to Romania the fans went crazy nothing more you can say great result by Romania and they're really living up to that dark horse underdog tag Scotland horrific Scotland <laughs> the Scots weren't happy on Friday night not much more you can say horrific result for the Scots they were happy to be there and that's about it they just couldn't have gone any worse they did get an own goal towards the end gifted by Antonio Rudiger but apart from that a very dismal showing for the Scots and they're going to have to bounce back in match day two Ukraine they can join them slightly ahead of Scotland but also horrific what was that you're tipped as perhaps the second best team a team that can even perhaps beat Belgium to pip them to first place a lot of quality there particularly I like the players from Girona that was poor by Ukraine a very sloppy attacking and defensive performance something's going to have to change there I'm not sure what it is perhaps just play better you can't do much in international tournaments when you only have the players that are given to you tactically there was no real hunger and it was a real graveyard shift for those attacking players turkey actually above france in promising it was actually a great result georgia also played solidly but my tip out of the goal to get young player of the tournament it's looking good isn't it after one game what a banger he just gave himself time and did a real finesse power shot into the top left hand corner what a shot by arda and Real Madrid fans are must be happy as are the Turkish. Turkey played well, but that being said, they could have easily conceded towards the end and the scoreline perhaps doesn't really do it justice to how good a game it was. Of course, the goalkeeper came up towards the end and there was an empty net and the Turkish player took full care of that. Georgia, I'll put them in mid, perhaps somewhere in the middle. Played solidly. They actually had a chance in the 95th minute to equalize off a set piece and they were close. It was cleared off the goal line, I'm pretty sure. So who knows, it could be walking out with a two-old draw happy in what was a very partisan crowd a lot of Turks in Dortmund but well done to Georgia in their debut tournament Portugal top of mid because it took them until the 92nd minute in injury time to get that winner but very solid Ronaldo played solidly he was 100% accuracy on passes he created chances had a brilliant header that was <laughs> ruled offside and Jota tapped it in a solid performance from top to bottom perhaps on that goal what can you do who knows it's international football but Portugal a solid start Portugal played better than England and the Dutch that deserve to be at the top of mid Czech Republic bottom of mid is that a bit harsh perhaps the head of Poland they could have easily gone away with at least a point perhaps even higher you know what somewhere here here that's actually more fair they were the closest out of all these teams to actually getting a result even though they lost what can you do Czech Republic promising team with a lot of good players but we'll see what happens with the Czechs they now have to verse Georgia and Turkey Hungary now they were outclassed by Switzerland a very you know what a worry bottom of worry it wasn't a very promising performance by the Hungarians now I'm looking I can't put the Danish there in a worry since I did get a result so I put them above below England it has to be a results based doesn't it actually below Czech Republic Danish did not play well moving back to Switzerland and Hungary Hungary they got outclassed by the Swiss they had a bit of a patch in the second half where they were somewhat coming forward and creating chances but they went on the ball they were playing passive counter-attacking football I wasn't impressed by Hungary and not a lot of quality I I'll be honest I assumed that the players in support of Dominic Gulashi and so on were going to be a bit better but they were poor they were actually big 
grade players. And Switzerland took full control of that, led by Granit Xhaka in the midfield. For me, Switzerland were actually in the promising tier. Switzerland actually showed something different to previous tournaments and something that they can actually build on. And this tournament, I wouldn't be surprised if they can once again make a quarterfinal because they have a bit something about them, experience and quality. It's a good match. Spain. They had to go in the promising tier. Absolute, absolutely dismantled Croatia. What a win. I saw some tactical analysis on YouTube saying it was closer than it appeared, but it wasn't. Spain absolutely teared them up. It was over in the first half. They could have gone for four, five, or six, in my opinion, if they wanted to really do it, but they didn't go for the jugular and they let Croatia back into the game, almost conceding a goal. But Bruno Petkovic, mate, what are you doing? Trying to get a red card instead of getting that tap-in goal. Karma got him hard and that's why Croatia is also going into the horrific category in between Scotland and Ukraine. They had a few more chances than Scotland, even though they didn't score, but Croatia, that was horrific. You couldn't have seen a worse result for Croatia going into that match. And now, instead of being seen as a realistic chance to go all the way, they're seen as a washed up team who's done. But of course, people are always judgmental and quick to judge teams and people's age. So I wouldn't be surprised if Croatia bounced back against Albania. But we're only judging on match day one and I hope Croatia can bounce back. But my goodness, that was horrific by the Croats. Italy, they dominated pretty much the whole match following that first minute and they have to go at the bottom of promising that was a good match for Italy they were really tested at the start by the Albanians a really vocal Albanian crowd but they really took control following that goal scored in the 10th and 15th minute by Bastoni and Barella the two players who we predicted to be the best players for Italy and they're showing it so far <laughs> scoring the goals but Albania credit to them the crowd was vocal in my opinion perhaps somewhere in the mid category what on to the Albanians they really showed something breaking a record at least something to go home with but that'll be probably their biggest chance unless they can cause an upset against Croatia. Slovenia probably above somewhere in the category of up here because they got a result against Denmark. They weren't fancy to get a result. It's the opening day, so always a better chance to get something. Going into that Serbia match, I think a lot of people might be predicting Slovenia to get it done. And personally, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but it is what it is. So looking at this list, perhaps too many teams in the mid category, perhaps, but I don't think Portugal played well enough to be in the promising category. I would put actually Italy and the Swiss above Turkey and put Turkey above France. But horrific Ukraine, Croatia, Scotland, Awari, Belgium and Hungary. Mid Portugal, Slovakia, the Dutch, Netherlands, England, Slovenia, Czech Republic or Czechia, Albania, Denmark, Georgia, Serbia, Austria, Poland and promising the Swiss, Italy, Turkey and France and outstanding well done to Germany, Romania and Spain. So <laughs> Germany and Spain but you wouldn't expect Romania to be setting the standard at the start of a tournament and we'll see what happens at match day two it might be completely flipped upside down Scotland Croatia and Ukraine might bounce back with massive wins who knows we'll see what happens the biggest match of this match day is probably France versus Netherlands that being said Mbappe is out with that broken nose so we'll see what happens what a start to the tournament it really feels like a proper Euros we've been robbed of it in the last Euros you know with COVID and the lack of crowd it really feels like a World Cup doesn't it we haven't really seen this since 2016. It's a great time of year and just enjoy the matches as they come. Let me know in the comments down below if you would change anything in this list or if I've done any nations dirty. But that's it for now. Until next time.